Hey guys, welcome back. So today, I brought home this 1000 watt Pincor generator. This was made in 1985 and I would say well cared for. The chrome has a lot of shine on it and there's very little rust on this generator. Now, I don't know much about this. I actually went to the seller that had this to buy a Generac, which I did. That'll be a separate video, but he threw this one in at no additional cost. So I didn't really do anything other than put it in the car and bring it home. But now that it's here, I've been checking it over and I've found a couple issues, starting with the tank. There was a pretty bad smell coming from it in the car. So I already drained the tank out, put a little bit of fresh fuel in there, but there is a lot of rust in there that does need to be dealt with. And I'm sure the carburetor has issues as well, but there is a bigger issue here. This engine, it is a three horse Briggs flathead engine, also looks to be in very good shape, but when I pull the engine over, it pulls freely. There is absolutely no compression, but I do think I hear the piston going up and down. So most likely it is a stuck valve. So let me get you set up a little bit better and get going on this. I'm just gonna start by pulling the spark plug out. The valves are on this side. So with the plug removed, I should be able to see if there's a stuck valve. She's tight. There we go. So the good news is the piston's going up and down, which means the connecting rod's not blown, but I can't see the valves. I was hoping to see them because they are just right there. So I'm gonna get the boroscope out see if I can get a better angle and see if either of those are stuck. Just gonna rotate the engine, get the piston all the way down. And definitely somewhere, but you can still see the cross hatch a little bit on the cylinder. So yeah, not too bad. As far as the valves go, they should be over here. You can just almost see one right there in the bottom left that is the intake valve let's rotate the engine and it's opening and closing so the intake seems fine there's the exhaust valve it's open right now actually it was closed but it's opening and closing So things actually look good. Now we got compression. So yeah, it was stuck or maybe there was some rust, but it's not stuck now. So let's check for spark. Nice, strong spark. So you know what's next. Let's get a little bit of fuel in there, hook up the light, see if this thing makes power. I'm gonna use a bit of two stroke. That should be plenty. That is bone dry. So yeah, let's get a little oil in there. I'm just gonna pull this off before the first start because there is a foam filter in here and they tend to biodegrade 
over time, especially if they're left outside. This one's actually decent. So it's really not bad. It is oil soaked. Maybe that's where the oil went from the engine. Maybe this was tipped on its side. I'm not really sure. Anyway, I'm going to leave this off for now because the tank does need to come off, assuming we make it that far. So let's pull the cord. I'm going to get a light plugged in and see if the engine runs and if it makes power. So I just choked the carburetor. There is some fuel in the tank, so there is a slight chance that this could keep running. So let's give it a try. It makes power. Let's try it again. Just time just on the carb. These old Briggs, they continue to amaze me. This had no compression, similar to the Dingo I worked on a little while back. And after pulling it over a few times, compression came back. The engine started, sounded good, and the generator makes power. So we have compression, we have spark, we have timing. Fuel is the issue here. The carburetor did not even attempt to run the engine. So I think the next move here is to get the tank and the carb uninstalled. We'll get them cleaned up, bolted back on, and we should be good to go. Having trouble getting the access I need to that bolt. So I actually think I need to pull off the blower housing and that will allow hopefully a little bit better access to get a wrench on there. Not the easiest one to get, that's for sure. But it's coming. see what this looks like. I'm not too worried about the carb. It is aluminum and brass. The tank though I am worried about. You know parts can be bought for the carb but the tanks discontinued and it's in pretty high demand because they do rust out and as we saw there is rust in here. Hopefully the bowl isn't too bad. 
think that's it. Just three bolts. It's not too bad, actually. I mean, there is rust in there, but it's just surface rust. I don't see any holes, so I think that'll be fine. So I'm going to put just a bit of gas in there. We'll set it aside, and while we're waiting to see what happens with that, we'll get the carb cleaned up. Gonna start by getting this gasket off. I'm gonna get this cover off. This hides a diaphragm and it's a fuel pump that pumps fuel up from the tank and it fills the bowl. And then once in the bowl, this picks it up and the main jet should be in there. That's the adjustment. And that's really it. There's not a whole lot to this carburetor. Too bad. Actually fairly clean, but yeah, the diaphragm is pretty much shot. It's all crispy, so that needs to be replaced for sure. And a little junk in here, but not, not clogged up. And before I remove this adjustment needle, I'm gonna turn it in just see where it was set at. It's one turn, one and a half, just shy of two turns. We'll call it one and three quarters. That looks like the main jet right there. Let's see if we can get that out. It's not clogged. So yeah, this carburetor actually, besides the diaphragm was in really good shape, but the bowl was empty. So I'm thinking that the diaphragm's to blame. It's just too crispy. Check valves aren't in great shape either. So I don't think it was able to pump fuel up. You know, potentially one of these tubes could be clogged, but I noticed they both have screens, which is good, especially on the bowl. With that rust in the bowl, if a piece breaks off, that should prevent things from getting clogged up. So I'm just going to spray through here a bit with some carb spray, see if I can make it all the way through. And we'll let this soak for a little bit in the ultrasonic.
Okay, good. Both pickup tubes, they are clear. So no issues there. Cleaned up pretty well, but I don't think it needed it. The carb actually was in pretty good shape. I think the issue is just that this pump diaphragm is petrified. So I actually thought I had one of these in my stash, but I don't. So I need to place an order. And surprisingly, this gasket here, I didn't think I had, but I do. So we can use this one but I'm gonna have to wait to reassemble this until I get that new diaphragm. As far as the tank goes, it is holding fuel. It's been over an hour and it's holding steady. So that I think is a good thing. So let's get the fuel drained out of this tank. I'm gonna put a bunch of nuts and bolts in here. We'll shake it around, get all the loose debris off and potentially soak it in evaporust. I guess we'll see what it looks like once I do that. I'm a little hesitant because although evaporust is safe for metal, it only eats rust, but there is a lot of rust in there and I don't want to make a hole. Plus we have a screen down here. So if a flake does come off, it should not clog anything up. Not the best looking tank, for sure. So I'm um, a little pessimistic about this, but let's get these nuts in. We'll throw in some water, a bit of degreaser, shake it around and see what we can get out of that tank.
that cleaned up pretty well and didn't take long. You know, it's not perfect, but it is usable. All the chunks of rust are gone. You know, we're still left with some surface rust and some pitting, but that should be good for a while, I would think. And also cleaned up the bowl just using this little wire wheel. Not going crazy. You know, I don't want to cause a problem, but I think just knocking off some of that loose rust is going to make a big difference as far as how much longer this tank is going to last. The new diaphragm showed up today, so I think I'll start by getting that installed. And to do that, you just need to put the spring back there. This cap really just offers a little bit of protection so the diaphragm doesn't rip. Now I need the diaphragm. Put the main jet back in. I'll just turn this down until it's lightly seated. And it was set at one and three quarters turn out. But the initial setting on this should be one and a half. So since we have a clean carb, a new diaphragm, a clean tank, that is where I'm going to start. That's a half turn. One. One and a half. That's it. It's a pretty simple carb. So let's get this back on the tank. Definitely a bit tricky to get this stuff reconnected, so take your time. So this was the governor spring I just connected here. Uh, next, there is a rod that connects right there. And it runs up to an adjustment where you can use that to adjust the engine speed. So we'll be adjusting that once the engine's running to get it at 61 and a half hertz.
Gonna add a little bit of oil right in there. There is a pad that'll soak that oil up and it needs a little bit of lubrication so that this can spin. There's actually part of the crankshaft, the tip of that goes inside of here. So if it gets rusty and crusty, then you're gonna have issues with the recoil. But this one seems to be pretty good. There's really nothing wrong with this filter other than it's full of oil. So I'm going to squeeze that out and we'll try to reuse it. If there's too much oil in it, it's going to run the engine pretty rich. But you can just clean it like this to get all that extra oil out. You can even wash it in the sink if you want. These are reusable, they can be cleaned. All right, pretty much ready to go. I've got the space heater hooked up and I've got it set to 750 watts, which is a 75% load. And when you factor in the light, we're a little bit over 80%. So let's get it started. And assuming it sounds good, we'll put a load on it and see how it does.
Not too bad, it started right up. The engine speed, it was slow, so I brought it up to about 61 and a half hertz without a load. And the voltage came up as well. This is a brushless generator and there's no AVR. The voltage, it's based purely on the engine speed. So that no load voltage, it was at about 144 volts. I then applied a 750 watt load and the engine speed held very well at 59.3 hertz. The voltage came down to about 125 volts. So given the good response from the governor, I decided to drop the engine speed under load just below 59 hertz. And that brought the voltage down as well, but not quite as much as I would have liked. Once I shut the load off, the engine speed, it was at 61 hertz, uh, but the voltage was still at 141 volts. And usually on this type of generator without a load, about 134 volts is the max you want to see. And it's kind of surprising actually that the voltage was so high given the fact that the capacitor in there most likely is from 1985. So I would say it is still running very well. And most likely I'm gonna bring the loaded engine speed down to 58 Hertz, which will just help the voltage situation a, a bit. But yeah, all things considered, this is doing a very good job. I think I'm gonna start it again real quick apply that 750 watt load and bring the engine speed down to 58 hertz under that load and then take the load off and see what the voltage does. Adjusting that engine speed down really had no effect because once I turned the load off, the voltage sprung right back close to 140 volts. So yeah, unfortunately, this is a brushless generator. They produce very dirty power. And in this case, because of the lack of regulation on the voltage, the voltage is also higher than you would want. So definitely don't use this type of generator on sensitive electronics, but It'll get the job done if you're in a pinch, and these are better suited, I think, for a work site. Anyway, there's one last test I want to do, which is hook up the oscilloscope to this. It'll let us see the sine wave and just verify that this is, in fact, brushless, because I think what we're going to see is that the sine wave is very distorted without a load. And then once I put a load on it, it should clean up some, but it's still not going to look great. So... Let me get that hooked up and we'll give that a quick try.
I stand corrected. I think this one is brushed. The sine wave, granted, didn't look great, but if it was brushless, it would have looked a lot worse. And when applying a load, a brushless cleans up quite a bit, but there is usually a severe distortion still in that sine wave, and I did not see that at all. So I just took the camera and peeked in that vent, and I could see the slip rings as clear as day. So yeah, a little bit surprising. Most generators of this vintage and this size are brushless, but this one is a step above, I would say, most of the others in this class. Anyway, this generator, I think I've taken it as far as I can. I mean, it starts consistently first pull. It's making power, granted a little too much. Uh, the governor's responding very well, and everything is doing, for the most part, what it should. So, I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.